When you picture a specific culture, what is the first thing you think of? What kind of food they eat? What language do they typically speak? How they dress? What music they like? Can they dance? Are they good at video games? Do they wear Jordans? Typically, when thinking of someone's culture, most generalizations are somewhat modern. There is an exception to this, of course. When thinking of a Native American, what comes to mind? I'll give you a second to think about that. Had enough time? Something like this, perhaps. I'm sure whatever you're imagining involves a headdress of some sort with plenty of feathers. Maybe a spear or bow aimed at some buffalo. Most people's knowledge of Native Americans goes to the extent of some generalizations of what they supposedly look like a hundred years ago, along with scarce knowledge of some wars and whatever books, movies, or video games based on the past have thrown into the pot. What do people generally know about modern Native Americans? Something along the lines of, oh, they live in reservations and own casinos. And that's about it. So, when picturing our Native American, you think of this, rather than this. This is because America knows more about the people who died a hundred years ago, rather than the people walking the earth today. James Luna, a Lucino Indian artist and activist, sets to point out these outrageous categorizations of Native Americans through satire and his personal insight in art. Luna is known to be humorous when tackling the issues his people face. In his performance, Take a Picture with the Real Indian, Luna wore various outfits and told people that they had an opportunity to take a photo with a very much alive Indian. This performance gave off the sense that Native Americans were extinct and Luna was a mythical creature or just someone in a costume. Kinda like Mickey Mouse walking around Disneyland. Luna received lots of attention when he played his part, so to speak. Wearing the ideals of Indian attire, people were excited to take pictures with Luna. However, when he set up in just plain street clothes, nobody seemed interested. This was just one of Luna's many ways to expose false assumptions of Native Americans, along with what he calls McIndian, which is the idea that Native American culture can be mass-produced without real knowledge of the past or present Natives. After years of examining the same old exhibits on Native American culture throughout museums, forms of education, and television, Luna grew tired and angry. It was always the same thing, relics of the past on display for everyone, like Native Americans were a long gone civilization. Everyone was always set on the past and romanticisms of Native Americans. James Luna's real breakthrough was in 1986 with his artwork, The Artifact Piece. His performance and installation in the San Diego Museum of Man presented a new visualization of the American Indian. Luna installed himself into the museum, laying on a display case filled with sand alongside various personal items, such as his high school diploma, divorce papers, and record albums. He wore nothing but a breechcloth, and he had labeled some of his scars he had received from drunken scraps. He was just an ordinary man in his 60s, except he was Native American. He placed himself among the Kumyai Indian exhibit as if he fit right in. He laid silently and calmly as museum goers scrolled past and commented on his exhibit. Luna's self installation took place to drive home the point that these ancient ideals were dead, not Native Americans themselves. In an interview with the Smithsonian, Luna stated, I had long looked at representation of our peoples in museums, and they all dwelled in the past. 
they are one-sided. We were simply objects among bones, bones among objects, and then signed and sealed with a date. In that framework, you really couldn't talk about joy, intelligence, humor, or anything that I know makes up our people. The artifact piece was just Luna's way of using satire to expose his audience's misconceived notions on Native Americans. Luna labeled his own scars to mock other exhibits that did the same thing, except rather than a battle scar or a wound from hunting dangerous game, he just labeled a cut from an accident or a drunken fight. Rather than having other ancient artifacts that were worshipped in the past or ancient ritual items, like in the standard exhibit, Luna simply placed music records he enjoyed near his body. Once Luna's audience realizes that he's messing with them, everyone can laugh at the absurd idea that his people are only in the past. The artwork I created is paint on canvas and is 8 by 10 inches. It portrays a modern day Native American on the right half and his romanticized version on the left half. On the right side, the young man is wearing a backwards blue cap and a plain white t-shirt. He just seems like a regular guy. On the left side, however, the young man has a stereotypical Indian headdress on with red-tipped white feathers. He is also wearing a generic animal hide garb. The background of the painting is just flooded blue. My inspirations for this artwork came from the idea of fact versus fiction when imagining a modern day Native American the right side being the realistic version of the young man, and the left side is the fictionalized version. I did not base any of the left side off actual ancient clothing of Native Americans. All the attire on the left side comes from various Halloween costumes based on stereotypical ideas of Native Americans. Most costumes involved had a headdress of some sort and stitched clothing. So that is what I painted. The reason I did not base the left side attire of accurate ancient depictions of Native Americans is because when people make false assumptions, they don't usually associate with specific peoples. People tend to come up with generalizations, so I painted what was most generic, Halloween costumes. When it comes down to the young man's life, he will be depicted by only one half of the painting. People will either see him for his right side, a regular Joe with Native American descent, or they will see him for the left side of the painting, a member of a romanticized ancient civilization. Life will be hard for the young man until the right side becomes all that America sees. Okay, now it's time for questions. What is the reason James Luna labeled his scars? Was it A. To mock other exhibits B. Show he was a warrior or C. To entertain guests What did Luna call the mass production of Native American culture? Was it A. Kentucky Fried Indian, B. McIndian, or C. Duncan Indians?